Welcome friends, it's Kaylee Bird, and today we are gonna talk about what you need in your studio to start out as an oil painter. First, we're gonna go over the basic supplies that every good artist should just have in their studio at the ready, and then we're gonna go over how to actually set up your easel, both for functionality as well as ergonomic support. This is actually one part of a big series I'm doing right now all about oil painting for beginners or even intermediate folks because I've got a ton of information that I have compiled over the last 15 years of being an oil painter personally, and I've got a ton of videos coming out all about every aspect you can think of. So look around for playlists, check down below for links. I got all the best videos for you to learn all about oil painting. So make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you learned something today, please hit the subscribe button, ding the bell, and come back every single week for all the best fine art techniques and art biz tutorials. First things first, you are going to want to get a dedicated oil painting palette specifically for laying out and mixing your colors. I have used these ones with the small compartments. I like the top that keeps your paint nice and wet. However, I'm not a fan of these as much because it takes a lot of cleaning. Another type that's really good are just the handheld palettes. Those are great because you can really pull your paints next to your painting while you're working. But I would have to say these days my favorite is the palette paper. I love these because it is smoothed wax paper and once you're finished, you just throw away the sheet. No cleanup. There are a multitude of different surfaces to paint on and traditionally people paint on stretched canvases. I'm sure you are familiar with a standard stretched canvas. These are great. You can get them from the art store in a variety of different sizes and this is sort of the artist standard. And then of course there is just the regular canvas board. So this is the same primed canvas as the first one, but this is on a piece of very thick cardboard. These are really good for beginners. They're very inexpensive. They're quite sturdy. We have a tendency sometimes to lean. And um, so these are okay for leaning. And also they work well if you do not have an easel, if you're doing some outside painting or something like that. These are really nice because they're kind of like a little built-in easel. Some folks also like to paint on the wood panels. This is really nice. Mine has already been primed, but they usually come just raw wood. So you are able to prime them or not as you desire. And if you're not sure what priming is, don't worry, I'm gonna tell you in just a moment. And the last thing that people usually paint on, although there are many more surfaces than just these, is really nice, really thick art paper, watercolor paper, or multimedia paper, or even in your sketchbook. Um, the first two I showed you, the two canvases, are very nice because they come primed. And these last two have do not come primed. Don't worry, I'm gonna tell you all about priming. But the first two canvases, people usually like, especially beginners, because you don't have to do anything. You can usually just pull it right off the shelf at the art store, bring it home, and start painting. Whereas these two, you're gonna to need to prep yourself a little bit. And my last recommendation for painting services is probably the least expensive and easiest to use, and that is the canvas pads. These are fantastic, especially for beginners or for practicing. It's literally the same thing as the stretched canvases or the canvas board, but instead these are just primed canvas sheets that come on a pad. I love them because they're so easy to use, but they're also pretty high quality. So I've actually done some good paintings on these canvas pads as well. Now, when we talk about priming a surface, what we are talking about is using gesso, which is essentially an incredibly thick acrylic paint that is used as a base. And even though it is an acrylic paint, you can still use it with your oil paintings. And basically you just paint it on any raw surface to create a nice ground for the oil paint to stick to. Artists tend to lay it on two or three layers and usually use a little bit of sanding paper in between each layer to make sure their surfaces stay smooth. It's one of those things that you'll just have to play around with and see how you like. Go ahead and grab a couple of palette knives as well. Any shape is fine, but if you don't have one, you're gonna wind up really ruining your paint brushes. So a palette knife, at least one, is quite essential. And while you're at it, get some masking tape. I highly recommend the white instead of the blue because if you use the blue to tape up what you're painting, it can actually interfere visually with what you're creating. And you're always gonna to wanna to make sure to have some paper towels and rags handy as well. Over the years, I have amassed a lot of paint brushes, about four times as many as what you're seeing here, but don't feel like you have to go out and break the bank getting every single thing. Go ahead and check out this video on the screen to see what kind of paint brushes are the best ones to stock up your studio. And if you're curious about which paints to buy, I even have a video about a very simple paint palette and how to create some basic mixtures and tonal values that should help you out if you're just now stocking your studio. 
you're going to want to do just a little research on which kind of medium to buy because each one will kind of give you a different effect. But luckily I have a video on both mediums and thinners that just came out so that you will know exactly what to buy and how to dispose of them properly. And I've even got another video on how to create your own thinner jar to save you buku cash when you go to the art store. Now, of course, every basic art studio has paper, pencil, eraser, but you might want to invest in a little bit of this carbon or graphite paper. If you saw the video about transferring your drawing to your canvas, you will see how super convenient this is. And you may want to go ahead and have other little pigments like woodless pencils or charcoal around. Those things always wind up coming in handy at some point. So when you're setting up for your painting, you want to think about having as least amount of distance between your subject, your painting, and your painting palette, because you want your eyes to be able to glide very quickly throughout those three. So the ultimate goal of setup is to have your painting, your reference, and your palette close by. So everything else is secondary to that. Ideally, you'd like a nice clean space. A space with a lot of natural light is fantastic. And you're gonna wanna go ahead and before you get started, lay out the supplies you need. If you have your oil paints handy, that's great. Go ahead and pull out the ones that you'll need. Pull out the brushes you're gonna need. Make sure your turpenoids are filled up. Make sure you've got some rags and your paper towels handy because that way you're able to just free flow into your creativity. Nothing is going to stop you. Nothing is going to get in your way. Even if you have a computer, you can set that up in such a way that you're able to view whatever your reference is on your screen or if you're painting from life. Just make sure that it's everything is set up in a way that you're going to be able to see it very clearly. Now I know I just mentioned setting up where you get some natural lighting, which is wonderful and ideal. Um, I actually like to do both natural lighting as well as neutral lighting. I recommend getting some maybe LEDs that have a diffused neutral white light. This will really help make sure you get those details and you wanna make sure that it is a neutral white and not like a natural or warm white because those can alter the colors as you're mixing them. And good news is, if you don't have an easel set up, that's okay. I've seen plenty of people literally just put a nail in the wall, hang up their easel, and then do the same kind of setup that I just showed you, only you're just going to be up against a wall, so you'll just need to bring a little shelf over next to you. Not a problem. One of the things that you need to remember about oil painting is that while you are painting, you are in a sedentary stance for a long period of time. So you need to make sure that you are taking care of your neck, your back, your shoulders, your wrists. And so we want to follow a few simple ergonomic steps to make sure that our body stays healthy while we're enjoying painting. And the number one way to make sure that you are in the correct position for oil painting is one, by standing up. And I know that this is limiting to some folks. I understand that some folks are not able to stand up for hours at a time or maybe even for short periods of time. And that's okay. If you need to sit down at your easel, that's fine. There are thousands of very talented oil painters that have sat down to paint and it's not a problem. However, if it is possible for you to stand up, I highly recommend it. For one, you will not fatigue so easily. It's better for your body just in general to be standing and sitting. And the best way to make sure that you are being kind to your neck, back, and shoulders is to stand because you are able to check your position. When we are standing straight ahead with your eyes forward, you understand, you can feel the way your head and neck are supposed to rest together. And so what you should be doing is you should be setting up your easel in a way that allows a neutral rest position to happen with your head and neck and shoulder. The best way to do that is to make sure that your painting is directly at eye level and that way your brush is working right at eye level. And what happens when your brush is too high is that your arm becomes extended and it becomes very heavy. So if you're painting way up here, your arm becomes very heavy, it's very tired. And if you're painting way down here, then your wrist is flexed. It's at a very flexed position and this is not good for you to stay at a very flexed position for long periods of time. It puts a very uh, a big strain on your tendons and bones. So when your painting is directly in front of you, your wrist is in a neutral stance. This is the best thing for your wrist. This is the best thing for your neck and shoulders to be in a neutral stance.
So as I'm working this painting, you can see if I'm starting at the top, I'm working down. If I'm going down here, I'm not going to start crouching and looking down. What I will do is physically raise my easel so that the painting is elevated once I start getting down to that. Now I understand some folks that work all over the canvas sometimes, or maybe it's much larger. Just try to do whatever you can to keep it as much in your neck spine neutral position. And if you are able to, have your painting palette also in the same position. I love now taping up these palette sheets, as I said, because that way I am staying in the same neutral position. And of course, as I said, you will also wanna have your image close by or on your computer. But the ideal way for you to set up is that you can have whatever you're painting on, as well as your palette, as well as your reference, either image, computer, or in person, all to be within direct view of each other and within direct standing neutral view using your neck. So you shouldn't be craning or moving or looking down or stretching or straining yourself in any way. Because remember, often we oil paint for many hours at a time. We wanna make sure that we're taking care of ourselves while we do. I also have a video I created all about studio ergonomics. It not only talks about standing at your easel, but it also talks about both sitting and standing desk using your computer and just all kinds of ways to make sure that you are taking care of yourself in your studio. I highly recommend you check out that video. I'll pop it up here as well as down below in the description. Want to learn even more about oil painting? Awesome, you are in luck because this video is actually just one part of my complete guide to oil painting series, which includes videos not only about the best paints, brushes, and supplies to stock in your own art studio, but detailed instruction on how to actually use all your supplies as well as sharing my own personal painting techniques. You can actually watch this entire series completely for free, either on my Skillshare or here in this playlist right here because I have got a wealth of oil painting knowledge to share with you. So if you did learn something today, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribed, hit the notification bell and come back every single week for all the best fine art tutorials and art biz advice.